Hey friends, it's Erin here. Welcome to my composition art journal series. This is part 29, His Wonderful Deeds. So I like to start a page sometimes by just gathering a bunch of supplies that I think I might want to use just to have them close at hand. And I had to sort my and organize my markers anyway. So I just dumped them all out and then grab some colors that I thought might look good on the page that I chose. And um, there are just a variety of Posca pens. They're, I think they're all acrylic based markers. Doodling is one of my favorite things about art journaling because I can follow random patterns and it can turn into something totally unplanned, but the process itself is very simple. So I wanted to do a page with vertical lines. And so that's what I'm gonna start off with. And then I'm gonna build patterns on my vertical lines and between my vertical lines and see what happens from there. I actually did this page like a few weeks ago, but I am at the mercy of my 18 year old son who owns the microphone that I use to do my voiceovers. <laughs> so I have to wait till like he goes to work. He works at a burger place right now. He's graduating this year. So as I speak, I am looking out my window here in Arkansas. It is January and it is zero degrees with beautiful snow falling, which is not very common here. So my method for this page is simply to grab a marker and not overthink it, just start a pattern and try to space out my colors a little bit. To me, this is a great kind of page to do while you just wanna decompress maybe from the day, maybe you're listening to a podcast or some music and, and you just want to relax. To me, this is super relaxing because I'm not doing anything that requires like a lot of technical skill. I'm just, just doodling, just making patterns. And I like this um, repeating line because it makes it even simpler because you just add lines and add patterns and add doodles. So my art journaling journey started last spring. I was um, helping at a homeschool co-op and there I decided to teach a uh, art journaling class for kids. So like eight to 12 year olds. And um, each week, it was like a 12 or 15 week course. So once a week. So we would um, everyone had their own art journal and then each week we'd have, we'd just try different things. So one week we'd do watercolors and one week we would, um, do collage and, um, it was really fun to try to come up with 15 different ideas. And then I always made an example page because with visual learners, a lot of times they learn by seeing like I'm like that. So it's like, just show me and I can get it. I can, Oh, okay. That's how you do it. That's what you're looking for. So, um, anyway, so through that process, I just kind of rediscovered how much I love art journaling and just experimenting, experimenting and playing. And so that led me to watch videos and, and explore some new techniques and, um, it's been really fun. So I put a few things on a Facebook group and then I had a few people comment, Hey, how did you do that? Can you make a video? So I just decided okay I'll make some videos <laughs> and that's how I why I started this channel um, and I have no great ambitions other than I just I really I enjoy the the whole editing process and filming process as almost as much as the art itself almost not quite <laughs> um, but I love to share things and I'm kind of an approval addict. So um, I'm aware that my value doesn't come from other people's approval, but you know, when somebody says, Ooh, I like what you did, it makes me feel good. <laughs> so I like to share it with other people cause I'm, I'm inspired by other people as well. But I um, have slowed down a little bit, partly just because life got a little bit busier in the fall. Um, but my goal is to make a page and create a video at least once a week. And so far I am not achieving that, but maybe I should kind of alter it a little bit to um, fit, you know, maybe I should say 50 videos for the year. So that would be an average, just, just under uh, one a week. Um, anyway, but you know, it's a hobby. It's one of those things that, do I have to do these things? No, this is, I just do this because I enjoy it. 
and um, you know I'm not making any money on this channel or anything so um, I just try to follow inspiration but because I kind of created a goal for myself in doing this it does motivate me to want to sit down on those days when I just don't feel like it maybe I'm just I don't know in funk I just want to be entertained so I'll sit down and watch a stupid movie or something <laughs> that does not engage my brain um, and that's okay sometimes but having this channel has really said you know what I'm gonna go make a page I need to to work on that goal and making myself do that has really reminded me how much action leads to motivation and it's true in everything in life um, I'm always telling my my kids this when they don't want to do something I said just give it five minutes just get it five minutes and usually by the time you're five minutes into something you're like oh yeah I love this <laughs> so don't feel guilty if you're like you know what I like the idea of all this but I just never do it you know it's for fun um, but try sometimes just to do it for five minutes and see what happens. See if, if the inspiration and the motivation takes over and then you're like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. Um, or not. You know, I have other interests. I'm sure we all have lots of interests that draw us in different directions. Um, right now, I am all about organizing and decluttering. Not only my house, but I want to help other people. Um, to me, it's such a rush to like take a cupboard that's a disaster and a mess and totally disorganized and sort it all out and get rid of crap I don't need and organize it and make it pretty. And I, so that's been like my other passion right now, which is funny because um, a lot of artists, I know when we share like on Facebook, our workspaces <laughs> we tend to be very chaotic because we're visual people and we want to we want to see everything especially when we're working on um, a piece of artwork or project we want to have everything close at hand so you know when I feel like grabbing a blue marker I, I can just see it it's right there I want that blue marker and um, um, so anyway but there are definitely ways that you can organize your craft room to suit the way that your brain functions. If you walk in to a room, uh, let's say an art room that just has everything on display all over the place and you feel overwhelmed, um, then you're probably a hidden organizer. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a tangent here and give you a little <laughs> organizing 101. So I watched this lady called The Clutterbug, Cass from The Clutterbug, she's awesome. She has discovered that people tend to their brains organize either um, they like things visual they want to see all their stuff or they like it hidden and very simplistic and from there people tend to um, organize either macro or micro so like very large categories or very very detailed categories and and you can be kind of anywhere on kind of the spectrum of all of those things but our brains tend to favor one or the other. I actually am a hidden, um, hidden detail person. She, she gives them each a, a bug name, so I'm a cricket. Um, however, you can be different things in different spaces because when I sit down at my art table, I have all my markers out where I can grab them. And let me see, I'm looking around. I have also the other things that I use a lot, like, um, well, I haven't been lately, but I have Mod Podge and Matte Gel, um, some gesso, um, some things I just haven't put away. <laughs> but I have a lot on my desk. But I also store my things in clear tubs where I can access them really easily and pull them out and look through my tubs to find what I'm looking for. Anyway, I am chewing your ear off, and let's see, we're at nine minutes. We've got eight minutes to go, so I will stop yakking so much and just let you watch the process and uh, catch up with you at the end.
So this felt like a good stopping point. I was really pleased with my progress so far and I left it overnight. As you can see, the lighting changed. So it's a new day and I'm just looking at my page freshly and um, I decided to leave this whole space over here on the right third of the spread for a um, quote or verse and wasn't really sure. So I chose this Bible verse and I have been really into experimenting with different kind of lettering too. So I've got like a Pinterest board that has several examples, but uh, I find like with most things, you can look at something to give you a little jumping off point and then you can kind of run with it on your own. So I kind of started copying a little bit of, of a style that I saw, but then it quickly just morphed into my own thing <laughs> really quick. So these, this verse was taken from a couple different verses from the David's Song of Praise from 1 Chronicles 16. So the way scripture works for me is I can read the same Bible verse, you know, a hundred times and one day it'll be like, oh, that's nice. That's good. That's good stuff. And then another day it can be like, just speaks to my soul. And I think that is how the Holy Spirit works in my life is through when I read his word. Um, sometimes some things just kind of hit the right chord, you know, musically speaking, if you hear when like an orchestra is playing and they are warming up and everybody is warming up playing different notes and it sounds like chaos and it, and then all of a sudden the leader, the leader, what's the leader called? The conductor <laughs> will have them all hit the same note. And then you're like, ah, that's what it's like for me when I'm reading God's word and something resonates inside me. I feel like that is him speaking to me. So that's how I would explain it. Give thanks to Yahweh and proclaim his greatness. Tell the world about his wonderful deeds. So I'm always a little conflicted about how much to share with, you know, the, the um, YouTube world on these videos. Cause I know that you're, a lot of you are just here um, looking for art ideas and um, I'm not ashamed of my God or my beliefs uh, but I also know that there's a lot of pain that has come from religion and um, I like to share God's love with people on a very personal level and not in a way that um, just that blasts people in the face or shoves it down their throat or anything like that so um, I hope that you all know him and know how much he loves you. And since this verse says to proclaim his greatness and tell the world about his wonderful deeds, I did feel like I needed to share a little bit of my story, but I only have a minute. So maybe I'll, I'll um, record a longer version of my testimony someday. But let me just say that I can't imagine going through life without a relationship with God because um, he carries me through everything. Um, early on, 28 years ago is when I uh, surrendered my life to him, and he has never failed me, not once. I've gone through every kind of trial. Um, I've overcome some addictions in life. I've overcome all kinds of things. Mostly, my struggles are with myself, <laughs> um, but he has done amazing things in my life, and even though I'm not anywhere close to being perfect, he has amazing grace that covers all my mistakes. And I'm just glad that, um, that it's not up to me because I would never be good enough on my own. I just need his grace and his mercy. And he provided that through his son, Yeshua, Jesus. So that's my finished page. What do you think? It's shiny. I always love shiny things. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today and that you'll come back and hang out with me again sometime. Until then, go make some art.